Welcome to a new vlog. Today we are taking a look at this USB charger I found on Banggood. It looked interesting because it had this small display next to the three USB ports and I thought this might be useful on the bench when testing various USB devices. According to the specifications it can do uh, 3 amps in total with a uh, maximum per port of uh, 2.4 amps. So although it has uh, three ports it's going to be hard for it to charge two modern devices at full speed at the same time but uh, we'll put that to a test later. It has a bunch of uh, marketing bullshit on its product page on Banggood, like for example they claim over discharge protection. How are they achieving that and why would it need that? I don't know. They also show a picture with two iPhones and an iPad charging from this uh, small charger. I'm pretty sure it cannot charge those at the same time, but nonetheless it looked interesting because it had this uh, uh, display which can show voltage and current. So let's uh, plug it in. Here is how it looks when you first uh, plug it in. But I need to connect uh, a device to show you. The sponsor of this video is JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB factory which currently has the best offer on the market. You can order 10 PCBs for just $2, so check out their website linked in the description below because it will probably cost you more to do the PCBs at home. So here it is with the device connected. It cycles between voltage and current for three times, I think, and then it uh, stays locked onto a uh, current display for the rest of the time this uh, device is charger, charging. I would have uh, preferred it constantly cycling voltage and current, but uh, that's what we get. The display is uh, visible even with my uh, powerful bench lights, but having this... Uh, this plastic cover film over the 7 segment LED display does increase its uh, con contrast, so that's why it's uh, visible. I wonder what happens when you plug in a uh, second device. I have one uh, right here. Let's try that. Okay, so it's uh, just a current increase. It doesn't detect that in any way to show me the voltage. So this also uh, tells us that it's not uh, individual per port measurement, but uh, an overall current and voltage measurement. That's to be expected, I guess, because uh, these are not separate channels. Uh, there is a, a single rail inside this, so they are, they are just measuring that uh, main rail. While connecting and disconnecting the load, I noticed that the voltage on the charger goes up to 5.32 volts. Uh, and as far as I know, for the standard USB output, the voltage can uh, only go up to 5.25 volts to be uh, within the allowed limits. So I brought an electronic load and a multimeter to measure exactly the voltage that we're getting at the uh, output port to see if that would cause a problem or not. So we're getting 5.12 uh, volts. Let's uh, start the load at uh, 200 milliamps and see what uh, happens to the voltage. So the voltage went uh, up slightly. It might have some voltage uh, compensation built in, but we'll see that. Let's increase the current. Yep definitely uh, compensates at 1 amp we have 5.2 volts 1.5 amps it's holding the voltage uh, quite well this is 2 amps okay so we don't go anywhere that um, anywhere close to that 5.3 volts uh, that it was showing uh, even at the um, uh, 2.4 amps, which is the maximum per port, we're showing uh, 5.2 volts, which is nice because that's going to compensate uh, for the losses in the USB cable that you are using to charging your device. So it might be that at the uh, end of the cable you are getting uh, 
I don't know five volts for example on my on my load but this is just a short cable of a, a thick short cable of just uh, 30 40 centimeters in length and uh, you can see at my load I'm seeing um, 5.12 uh, volts while at the uh, port of the charger we're seeing 5.19 volts so uh, we're losing about uh, 0.07 uh, volts so there could be two issues here either this is an inaccurate voltmeter or maybe it's measuring at a different point maybe it's not measuring at the output point uh, of the USB connector maybe it's measuring somewhere on the output of the uh, converter inside and uh, there there is uh, a loss inside this uh, charger as well uh, until it gets to the output port while we're here let's also test uh, how this charger behaves on over current uh, as stated on the uh, box it goes up to 2.4 amps per port let's uh, try to increase this 2.5 amps it's still working the protection hasn't triggered let's try 2.6 amps it's still working and the uh, current display is uh, fairly accurate at the moment it's showing 70 milliamps extra 2.7 amps can it do that yes it can output 2.7 amps 3 amps so it means it doesn't really have any uh, overcurrent protection on each uh, port it's just relying on the overall current uh, limit which might be at 3 amps so now if we go over we might start seeing uh, the overcurrent protection 3.1 amps, 3.2 amps, 3.3 amps, 3.4 amps, and it went into protection. Okay, so uh, yeah, it does have a protection, but it kicks in at uh, 3.4 amps. Yeah, let's try 3.3 it will happily output 3.3 amps but as soon as we go to 3.4 it will cut the um, output uh, voltage so i think these uh, three ports are just connected in parallel there is no separation between them no uh, uh, protection uh, between these ports i think they all share the same uh, 5 volts rail and uh, it doesn't matter if you pull uh, 3 amps from uh, divided or on uh, on these three ports or if you pull it from a single port I think it's basically the same thing so let's uh, try to do a uh, load test a stress test at uh, the maximum rated uh, of 3 amps and see uh, after half an hour uh, if it can still output that and um, what temperatures we get on the outer shell of this uh, charger so i'm gonna leave it running at uh, 3 amps and uh, get back in half an hour the charger has been running for the past hour at uh, 3 amps although i said i would let it run for 30 minutes i let it run a full hour at the uh, full rated output of uh, 3 amps and uh, i've checked with the thermal camera and uh, as you can see in these uh, these images the uh, temperatures Reaches are not very high. We have some hot spots at around the 54 to 55 degrees Celsius, but that is uh, perfectly acceptable for running such a charger at uh, full load. Next, I would uh, like to check the output uh, ripple voltage. I'm checking at 2.4 amps because this is, according to the specifications, the maximum output per port. So I would like to check like real world conditions so let's start the dummy load and i'm going to try to probe right on the uh, usb connector and the noise level we're seeing is about 120 millivolts uh, peak to peak which is uh, quite a lot i would have expected the lower noise level when compared to the Pearl charger I, re I reviewed last week, uh, it was uh, only outputting about 50 millivolts peak-to-peak -peak noise at full load. 
uh, which meant a higher load than the when this than this one because that charger was capable of outputting 2.7 amps uh, continuous on each port. So yeah, it's a pretty high noise level, but uh, still it would charge your device uh, just fine. However, you might find uh, some issues. For example, uh, with these kinds of chargers that output so much noise, when you're listening to your headphones, if the audio circuit of the device under charge, if it's not really well isolated, you might hear this kind of uh, static noise uh, overimposed on the uh, music you are listening. But it all depends on how well the uh, power supply is filtered inside the device. That is not to say it's acceptable for the charger to output this kind of noise and rely on the other device to filter it. The charger should output a lower noise level. So we've shown that the charger can output its uh, full rated uh, power. Now let's do a teardown and see how it's built inside. And to do that I think I'm gonna start by removing this um, panel in here. But unfortunately this doesn't take me very far because uh, I'm stuck now. I think uh, this charger was assembled through here and uh, it was uh, sealed. So it's probably gonna be a uh, destructive uh, teardown in this case. But it's all in the name of science. So I managed to pull this apart using a lot of force and uh, bit of destruction safe to say it will not look as good as new ever again but that's a good thing because um, uh, it means this uh, this end cap it was uh, glued very well so there is no chance of this uh, coming off accidentally let's see if I can pull the PCB without destroying it I think it's coming out, yeah. So I've taken a closer look at this and I can tell you a few things. First, I like that uh, they're using uh, this type of um, uh, connection for the main input. It's a spring contact type. This should be uh, reliable over time and uh, it's easy for them during assembly as well. There's no wires to be soldered. Next, on the input section, we do have a uh, small fuse, which has been uh, heat shrinked, and a uh, thermistor, which is uh, here. However, the common mode choke, which should have been installed here, is missing. They are probably trying to save cost there. The two caps on the input are KSJ brand, and uh, there is uh, this inductor right here which is uh, uh, connected between these two capacitors like a pie filter on the input but it's hard to to see that because of all of this uh, celastic which is spread everywhere there is also a, a small surface mount uh, ferrite on the back it's uh, connected after the rectifier on the uh, negative uh, rail and that helps but if a common mode choke would have been um, installed uh, I think we would have seen a lower noise level on the output. The transformer looks to have uh, double insulated uh, wires and that improves the isolation and the overall safety of the device. There is also plenty of uh, clearance between the uh, primary and the secondary of this device. There is a milled slot and then there is this uh, plastic shield to improve on that. So safety wise I think we have pretty good isolation on this uh, device between primary and secondary side. On the secondary side we have uh, this uh, controller. Uh, the part number is JW7707D and it's a uh, synchronous rectifier. We have a couple of um, uh, capacitors on the output of that. These are uh, like an unknown uh, brand they are 560 uh, microfarads, 6.3 volts uh, rated. Although they look like a polymer capacitors, I'm, I think they're just trying to replicate that look. I'm 
not sure, but I think they are not anything more than a cheap uh, Chinese brand of electrolytics. We have an uh, unmarked chip on this uh, small riser board, which uh, handles the uh, voltmeter and the ammeter as well as the 7 segment uh, display. Although this is not marked, I think it's a pretty cheap, maybe an 8051 microcontroller. Something very cheap uh, anyway. There are two uh, shunt resistors connected in uh, parallel. These are used to uh, measure the uh, current. I'm not sure if the voltmeter error we were seeing earlier is caused by some internal uh, error or maybe because of the uh, measurement point. I'm not sure if they're measuring uh, right at the output of the uh, uh, rectifier or maybe uh, at the uh, USB port. But here is uh, uh, something interesting. On uh, this USB port, we can see two resistors, R4 and R5. And these are 51K resistors connected on the data lines. And that means this port is set for uh, 2.4 amps Apple style protocol. While uh, these uh, other two USB ports don't have any resistors connected on the data lines, but we do see a uh, small 6-pin chip in uh, between these two connectors and I've uh, traced those pins and they are connected uh, to the data lines of these two ports and the markings on the chip are PC5889. Now I couldn't find the data chip for, uh, for that chip but after some searching I found something similar, the S5889 and it seems to do charging port management uh, on the data lines to tell the device at which current it can charge. It can manage two ports, hence the uh, two ports connected to that chip and the third port is just set with uh, resistors. I have also checked with the uh, Bryman installation tester at 1000 volts between the input and uh, each uh, connection on the output and it passed the test successfully. Unfortunately, I did that off camera because uh, I didn't have enough time. I had to return the Bryman insulation tester to the Electron. It was uh, only a loaned meter. So my final words on this uh, charger. Uh, the voltage display is uh, pretty much useless. It's not accurate and because it is shown only for a few seconds when you first connect your device to the charger. At least for me, that doesn't help. Like I mentioned in the past, China is improving the designs of these uh, chargers each year, so the situation is much better now than it was a few years back. There would still be the uh, $2 dead traps disguised as Apple charger, but in the $10 range you can get some pretty decent uh, chargers these days with adequate protection. This charger has the required protection features to make it safe to use, however, it is not special in any way, the noise level is higher than uh, I would like to see and the output current of just uh, 3 amps spread over 3 ports, that's not enough to charge 3 devices, not even 2 at the same time if they both require more current. It also seems the same charger is available with different branding on AliExpress for less than 10 bucks and I think there is a good chance of those being identical to this one inside. So if you are interested in uh, getting the cheapest option, I guess you could give those a, a try on AliExpress. I might uh, use something like this to power a Raspberry Pi or an IP camera. It could certainly power those uh, with no issue. But I wouldn't use something like this to, to charge uh, my devices simply because uh, um, I would need more, more power than this is capable of uh, to provide. So that was all for today. I hope it was uh, interesting to watch. Don't forget there are links in the description below and if you purchase something after you've clicked those links, I will get a small commission. I would appreciate if you could uh, hit the like button and I will see you next week.